Hello, my name is Kelly Wenzel, Project Director for Urban Education and Outreach with New Jersey Audubon. This project was initially written and scripted by the University of California Museum of Paleontology. This presentation is funded by the Northfield Bank Foundation. When you go outside, what do you notice? Do you notice the smell of the air or feel the warmth of the sun? See the clouds or blue sky? Hear birds singing or trees moving in the wind? Hear or see cars and people in the streets? The world is made up of many parts that interact to shape our everyday experiences. Many of the processes that determine how the world looks today have been happening for millions of years throughout the history of our planet. Recently, especially in the last 200 years, humans have caused many changes to Earth's climate and ecosystems. To understand these changes, let's take a closer look at the parts of the Earth and how they interact to shape the world around us. Scientists and educators developed a way to organize the major components of the Earth system. Within our framework, there are three primary categories. Causes of global change, the human activities and non-human phenomena that change the Earth system. How the Earth system works, the major processes that shape the world around us. And measurable changes in the Earth system, the evidence or data that indicate how fast, the rate, and how much, the magnitude, the world is changing. The Earth system consists of four major parts. The atmosphere, or air, hydrosphere, or water, geosphere, or land, and biosphere, or life. We'll start our discussion of how Earth system works by exploring the four spheres. The Earth consists of four major parts, the atmosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, and biosphere, or air, water, land, and life. First, let's look at the atmosphere, the layer of air around the Earth. The air we breathe and the clouds that bring us rain are all part of the atmosphere. Let's look at the hydrosphere, the parts of the Earth that have water as ice, liquid, and gas. Earth's oceans, rivers, lakes, and the water we drink are all part of the hydrosphere. The geosphere includes all of the land on continents and under oceans, and the rocks, both solid and liquid, beneath our feet. The fourth and final part of the Earth is the biosphere, which is all living things, including humans. Living organisms affect and are affected by atmosphere, hydrosphere, and geosphere. The Earth system is connected processes in that the atmosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, and biosphere that shape our world and how it changes through time. We begin our exploration of global change with the Earth system of connected processes. In the following slides, we'll add system processes to the diagram, which we hope will help you think about the cause and effect relationships among the parts of the Earth system. To understand how the Earth works, we first need to know about the sources of energy for processes in the atmosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, and biosphere. For understanding global change, the most important components of the Earth's energy budget are how much sunlight is absorbed and reflected and how much heat is re-radiated back into space. These primarily affect the atmosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere. Additionally, Earth's internal heat drives processes in the geosphere, but contributes very little energy to Earth's climate and most ecosystems. Each of these four energy budget phenomena are represented as icons in the diagram. So the sun provides the earth with the most of its energy. Today, about 71% of the sunlight that reaches the earth is absorbed and the rest is reflected back into space. Absorbed sunlight is then re-radiated by the earth as long wave infrared radiation, 
also known as heat, represented as red arrows here. Sunlight and re-radiated heat are the energy sources that drive the processes in the atmosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere. However, because the Earth is a sphere or a ball, more sunlight is absorbed per square area in the tropics than at the poles. So the Earth is heated unevenly. This is why it's warmer near the equator than at the poles. Earth's internal heat is left over from when our planet formed and from radioactive decay of elements inside the Earth. While the Earth's internal heat contributes very little energy directly to the processes that shape the Earth's climate, it is the energy source that drives processes like plate tectonics and parts of the rock cycle. The global energy budget powers the fundamental processes that shape the world around us. To explain how the atmosphere and hydrosphere work, it's important to understand these four processes. The greenhouse effect, atmospheric circulation, ocean circulation, and the water cycle. I'll explain each of these processes briefly. The greenhouse effect. This is a fundamental process in the atmosphere that affects the re-radiation of heat within the atmosphere. Sunlight is absorbed by the earth and is re-radiated from the earth's surface as heat. This is shown below as dark red long wave radiation arrows. Most of this heat is then absorbed and re-radiated by greenhouse gases, impeding the loss of that heat from our atmosphere into space. This process is the greenhouse effect. Without the greenhouse effect, the earth would be much colder and all surface water would freeze. Conversely, increasing the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere increases the earth's average temperature affecting global climate and ecosystems. Atmospheric and ocean circulation influence each other. These processes are driven by the uneven heating of the Earth's surface by the sun and the Earth's rotation. Atmospheric and oceanic circulation are the two primary ways that heat is redistributed across the entire surface of the Earth which in turn brings us our daily weather and shapes regional climates. Increasing the Earth's average temperature, for example, due to an increase in greenhouse gases, changes these circulation patterns, altering climate and in turn Earth's ecosystems. The water cycle or the movement of water through the Earth system shapes the land, atmosphere, and biosphere. The cycling of water is important because water is essential for all living organisms, transports heat, and itself is a greenhouse gas. Having now summarized the key processes in the atmosphere and hydrosphere, we turn to the fundamental process in the biosphere and geosphere. In the next two slides, I'll explain this. Plate tectonic processes and the rock cycle, which includes weathering, shape the Earth's surface. Continents and oceans form and change over millions of years, influencing how ocean currents and air move and how water cycles. Over millions of years, burial of carbon from living things and from weathering of the Earth's surface influence the amount of carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, in the atmosphere. Evolution and species interaction profoundly affect the Earth system. For example, the evolution of photosynthesis dramatically increased oxygen levels in the atmosphere. Life has and continues to be shaped by evolutionary processes. Evolution is the change in characteristics of populations of organisms over time that are inherited from one generation to the next. Additionally, all species are affected by interactions with other living things. And these interactions influence the abundance, the life cycles, 
and evolution of organisms. For example, in coral reefs, species complete for limited space and various fish, starfish, and snails live in and feed on coral and algae. Fundamental to how the earth works is the cycling of elements such as carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus through the four spheres. For example, carbon in the form of carbon dioxide is captured from the atmosphere by photosynthesizing plants and is released back into the atmosphere through processes such as respiration, decay, and from the burning of fossil fuels. Nitrogen and phosphorus are essential nutrients for life on Earth. For example, these elements are essential to components of proteins and genetic material. Elements cycle through the Earth system through various human and non-human processes. This diagram shows some parts of the carbon cycle, including some of the ways carbon dioxide moves among the four spheres. Human activities such as the burning of fossil fuels from geologic reserves, deforestation, and agriculture contribute carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is also absorbed in a variety of ways, including by the ocean and photosynthesizing plants. However, these sinks do not remove all of the carbon dioxide released by human activities into the atmosphere. As a result, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is also a greenhouse gas, continues to grow, raising the average global temperatures. A major focus in the study of global change is explaining how climate and ecosystems change. Given the number of factors that influence climate and ecosystems, including all of the processes outlined in the previous slides, we have placed the terms climate and ecosystems in the innermost ring of how the Earth system works. A region's climate is defined by its average weather over a long period of time. Weather describes the short-term variation in temperature, precipitation, wind, and clouds. Here we show average annual precipitation, which is an important component of regional climates. In turn, annual precipitation is determined by the amount of sunlight received at different latitudes, as well as atmospheric and oceanic circulation patterns. Biomes are broad geographic regions, either on land or in the ocean, where distinctive groups of species live. For example, the plants and animals found in a tropical forests are different from species found in deserts. The boundaries of biomes are largely defined by regional climates. Within biomes are ecosystems, communities of living organisms that interact with each other and the physical environment. Ecosystems are continuously affected by all the earth system processes. So you've been introduced to the processes that are essential to how the earth systems work. To understand causes of global change, we'll turn our attention to the non-human causes and human activities that influence the earth system. We'll then explore how we can measure the Earth system to determine how fast and how much the Earth is changing. To understand global change, we'll turn our attention to the non-human and human phenomena that influence the Earth system and explore what we can measure to determine how fast and how much the Earth is changing. First, we'll examine the non-human causes of change. Some of the non-human causes of change, such as variation in Earth's spin, tilt, and orbit, or changes in the distribution of continents and oceans, cause changes on timescales of tens of thousands to millions of years and do not explain the rapid global changes we are observing today. Events that cause rapid change, such as meteorite impacts or major volcanic eruptions, are rare 
But when they do happen, they can have catastrophic consequences throughout the Earth system. Here, I'll explain some of these non-human causes of change. As the Earth orbits the sun, the Earth is pulled by gravitational forces of the sun, moon, and large planets in the solar system, mostly Jupiter and Saturn. These gravitational forces slowly alter the Earth's orbit between a more circular and more elliptical or oval shape over the periods of 100,000 and 413,000 years. You see this indicated by the blue and yellow dashed ovals on the diagram. Additionally, the direction of the Earth's axis rotates or wobbles over periods of 19,000 to 24,000 years. Further, the angle of tilt of the Earth's axis changes with a period of 41,000 years. These small changes alter the amount of sunlight received by different parts of the Earth over time, changing the length and intensity of the seasons. Over the last 800,000 years, changes in Earth's orbit cause cycles of ice ages approximately every 100,000 years. The Earth's spin, tilt, and orbit continue to change today, but do not explain the current rapid changes. Continents move and oceans open and close over tens to hundreds of millions of years because of plate tectonics. Plates typically only move around two to 10 centimeters per year, but over millions of years, this motion alters the size, shape, and depth of ocean basins and the distribution of land masses. The location of oceans and continents, including mountains, influence how heat is transported by ocean and atmospheric circulation and where ice accumulates on land, which in turn shapes climate, biomes, and ecosystems. Slight fluctuations in the amount of energy released by the sun have been measured for more than 40 years. These fluctuations include increases and decreases that occur approximately every nine to 11 years, shown by the red line on the bottom of the graph, which correlate with the number of sunspots on the surface of the sun. However, this pattern of solar output does not match the overall increase in global average temperatures observed over the same time period, which is the blue line in the top graph, leading to the conclusion that change in solar radiation is not a cause of the Earth's rising average temperature. Having briefly surveyed the non-human causes, we'll now examine some of the human causes of change, which are necessary for understanding how the Earth system has changed over the last century. Humans, especially over the last century, have dramatically changed the Earth system by extracting and using Earth's resources to power and sustain modern life. Fossil fuels have been used as our primary source of energy, which increases greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Use of fossil fuels is the primary cause of climate change today. Resource extraction and the burning of fossil fuels also release pollutants and waste that contaminate the environment and are harmful to life. Sustaining modern life through our industrial and agricultural activities also requ requires large amounts of fresh water, which we extract from the ground and divert from rivers and streams. Humans have dramatically reshaped the surface of the earth. We have removed forest and plowed and paved more than half of the Earth's land. Over the last century, these activities have been enabled by technologies we power with fossil fuels. Humans continue to disrupt ecosystems and expand urban areas and farmland. Unfortunately, many farming practices introduce pollutants to surrounding ecosystems and do not sustain soils for long-term use. As we recognize how we are changing the earth, we can also develop technology and solutions that can sustain human life and ecosystems. Our ability to innovate will hopefully allow humans to mitigate climate change and be resilient in a changing world. Restoring habitats such as coastal environments can benefit human populations by buffering cities from rising sea levels. Forests can absorb greenhouse gases through photosynthesis 
and provide a sustainable source of resources. Innovations in renewable energy, such as solar and wind power, can provide energy we need for modern life without contributing to global warming. For most of human history, our population size was relatively stable. But with innovation and industrialization, energy, food, water, and medical care became more available and reliable. Consequently, global human population rapidly increased, and we continue to do so, dramatically impacting global climate and ecosystems. We will need technological and social intervention to help us support the world's population as we adapt and mitigate climate and environmental changes. You now have been introduced to some of the major causes of global change. We'll now explore parts of the Earth system that we can measure over time to determine how fast and how much the Earth has changed. In understanding global change framework, measurable changes are in the middle of the diagram, shown in blue. Studying past global change is essential for understanding and making predictions about global change today and will help us prepare for sustainable future. There are an enormous number of aspects of the Earth system that can be measured. Here we'll consider just some of the most significant changes that are occurring around the world. The next few slides outline some of the measurable changes that occur in the atmosphere and hydrosphere. For example, we measure greenhouse gas levels and airborne particles in the atmosphere and sea level rise and ocean acidification in the hydrosphere. Notice that in how the Earth system works, the yellow ring, we talked about climate but here we talk about phenomena, which we measure on an hourly and daily basis, temperature, precipitation, clouds, and wind, which we call weather. Some of these measurable changes in the atmosphere and hydrosphere will now be explained briefly. Around the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in the late 1750s, atmospheric carbon dioxide levels were at about 280 parts per million and for the previous 800,000 years were not above 300 parts per million. However, levels have increased to over 400 parts per million due to human activities, including the burning of fossil fuels, agricultural activities, cement production, and deforestation. Humans evolved around 300,000 years ago, so our species has never before lived in a world with carbon dioxide levels as high as they are today. The increase in greenhouse gases in our atmosphere due to human activities has increased Earth's average temperature, as seen here. This map compares global surface temperatures in 2017 to the 1981 to 2010 average temperatures. The red parts of the map indicate that the largest changes in temperature happened at high latitudes in the northern hemisphere, and that most of the planet is warming. Note that because heat is redistributed by atmospheric and oceanic circulation patterns, slight cooling is observed in some regions. Scientists track how much sea ice has melted using satellites. As the world has warmed, sea ice has reduced dramatically, especially in the last 10 years, shown in the 2017 map. The melting of sea ice and ice on land influence other global processes, such as ocean circulation and how much sunlight is reflected by the Earth's surface. Sea level rise is due to water flowing into the ocean from melting land ice and because of the overall warming of the world, which causes ocean water to expand, also called thermal expansion. Around 40% of the global population lives in densely populated coastal regions, and many communities are already affected by rising sea levels. As human activities have increased, carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere, which is the red line, about a third of that carbon dioxide has been absorbed by the ocean, which is the green line. As this carbon dioxide dissolved into the ocean, the acidity of the ocean has increased, meaning the pH has decreased, which is the blue line. Changes in acidity can stress marine organisms, especially those that grow 
calcium carbonate shells or skeletons, making it more difficult for them to grow and survive. Ocean acidification impacts species populations and food webs, including organisms that are food sources for human around the world. In the diagram, we have now added icons representing measurable changes in the biosphere and geosphere. In the next two slides, we'll briefly explain some of these changes. Human activities, especially land use practices and hunting and fishing have dramatically impacted species populations and species ranges. For example, wolves were once found in North America from the Arctic to Mexico. After the 1920s, wolves were no longer found in most of the lower 48 states due to habitat fragmentation and hunting, as the species was viewed as a threat to humans and livestock. In 1973, wolves became protected under the Endangered Species Act, and since then populations have stabilized. Species populations and ranges are influenced by interactions with other species. For example, the reintroduction of wolves to Yellowstone National Park has decreased elk populations, which were overgrazing the vegetation. Since the reintroduction of wolves, this vegetation has recovered, providing food and habitat for other species such as bison and beavers, which has become more abundant in the park. The effects of climate change can be measured by tracking the shifts in annual life cycles of plants and animals. These shifts include changes in the timing of growth and reproduction. For example, the date of the first blooms of flowering plants is often triggered by increasing temperatures with the onset of spring. As the Earth's average temperature increases, many regions become warmer in the, earlier in the year, causing plants to bloom days to weeks earlier than they used to. See the orange map. This can be problematic for plant species if their pollinators do not also arrive earlier. Note that because heat is redistributed by atmospheric circulation patterns, which change with global warming, some parts of the United States may actually experience a delayed onset of spring, causing later blooming times. Those are the blue dots on the map. These changes can be an issue for farmers trying to determine when to plant their crops or what species to grow. As humans, we affect and are affected by the Earth's systems in many ways. The quality of human life is directly tied to the condition of our planet. In the center of the measurable changes section of the diagram are changes that most directly affect our health and well being, including the quality and availability of fresh water and food. Poor environmental conditions can cause displacement of human populations. Here, we'll briefly explore changes that affect the quality of human life. The quality of human life is dependent on the availability of clean, fresh water for drinking, sanitation, and agriculture. Our water reserves come from groundwater, lakes, and rivers, which are replenished through rainfall and snowmelt. Unfortunately, to meet the needs of growing populations, these reserves are being used faster than they are being replenished, which causes water stress as seen in the map. Climate change exacerbates water stress by increasing the frequency and duration of droughts. We have caused many changes to global ecosystems and climate at unprecedented scales and rates. We must consider how to use the earth to maintain the resources necessary for the health of future generations. Through an understanding of how the earth systems work, we have the power to make decisions that can maintain and improve ecosystems, human health, and well being across the globe. We have now completed our overview of understanding global change, which provides a way to organize the many processes and phenomena that shape global and climate ecosystems. We live in a fascinating and complex and interconnected world. And we hope that this resource helps you better understand how the earth works.